Hello guys, welcome to episode 5 of Men of Steel with me, the Right Honourable Franny J. And welcome to the episode in which we play quite possibly and quite probably our last two games of the season. We can still sneak into the playoffs, we're two points off Chase Town, but with 18 goals separating us, so there's not much of a chance of that. So this probably will be the last two games of the season, just to see how high in the league we can finish. We will be playing Romulus at home, who are 21st in the league. So it should, in theory, be an easy win. But do you remember, do you remember what I said last episode? Spalding are just absolutely awful. They've lost 26 of 36. Romulus are quite a bit better, but still awful. Bedworth the same. Market Drayton. We're, 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 looking, we're looking decent. Turns out... I probably should have taken a look at the fixture list before opening my big mouth because Spalding, Bedworth, Market Drayton and Romulus were four of our last five games. I scraped to win against Spalding, I scraped to win against Market Drayton. What happened here? <laughs> what happened against Bedworth? 19th placed Bedworth. What happened? We got obliterated is what happened. Much change is needed in the summer. But um, for now, yeah, we've got Romulus at home, who are currently sat in 21st. And we have got Basford, who are one place above us in 7th. We're playing them away. The win against Spalding did come at a bit of a cost. Jack Broadhead, not only my best centre-back, but the only centre-back that we've got who can run at some kind of pace. He's been injured and he's still seven weeks away from fitness. So starting in the centre-back places today, we've got Jamie Hadfield and Lee Cooksey, who you'll remember aren't the fastest. Here's Hadfield with four pace, three acceleration, wandering out of position. And here's Lee Cooksey with three pace, two acceleration, slightly less wandering out of position, but still so they're going to be our precarious centre-back partnership today. Um, because they are so slow, we're playing this 4-1-2-3 with a deep defensive line to try and negate as much of that lack of pace as we can, with Michael Towie connecting them to the midfield as well. Uh, it's worked with mixed results in the last few games, as you can see, but um, we're just going to have to bank on it working today because we haven't got much of a choice. We have got a couple of young centre-backs. We've got Roger Faraday here who's not a whole lot quicker. Uh, we have got Nigel Sharp who is an awful lot quicker but leaves a little to be desired in terms of literally everything else. So we'll keep him in the reserves for the time being. So for today's game, Baldrick will start in goal. Ben Sampaio, Hadfield, Cooksey and Smalley returning from injury. They will be across the back. Michael Towie in defensive midfield, Hendry and Potts in the centre, with Cheatham and Thomas on the wings behind Ollie Ryan. That's going to be our starting lineup. One more piece of admin to tell you about. Alec Denton has left the club for Bamba Bridge. Good luck to him. He's already got a goal in his three appearances, so that's already a much better average than he was getting from here. He actually scored four in 23. He did score this goal. Ben Partridge, aha, swings it in. Smalley, Denton. Denton scored! Denton scored! Which I very much appreciate. We did need goals at that point, and he got one for us to get to the draw. Other than that, he's been a bit of a disappointment. I saw that Bamba Bridge came in for him. I didn't make any attempt to stop him, to be honest, so he's, he's off. We've also got a very youthful bench for today's game because of injuries and what have you. We've got 17-year-old Roger Faraday, who I've showed you. 15-year-old Chris Jones, our good young right-back prospect. Leroy! Jennings, 19-year-old <laughs> midfielder. 16-year-old Alex East from the academy. And the oldest of the lot, 22-year-old, the veteran, Dominic Dell. He scored a couple of goals to scrape that win against Spalding, so he's showed enough there to get onto the bench today. So let's get into the match. Okay, I've told them to avenge themselves for 
the last match we played against Romulus, which was at their place, that we lost 4-1, much like a lot of other games this season. Michael Towie is the only one looking motivated after that, which probably, as an aggressive ball-winning midfielder, means he's just going to go flying out and two-foot someone. Here we go, we've got a dangerous-looking free kick. Hendry, King Hendry, whips it in. Let's come back out to him, he's laid off to Michael Towie. Brandon Potts. Oh, he's found Thomas and he's scored. Good lad, Thomas. What a start. Less than five minutes in. And we get a win which could see us up to sixth, which would be quite nice. It'd keep us in with a shout of the playoffs. So here is the goal. Hendry whips into the centre. Away by Daswell. Hendry got it to Towie, who held it up for a sec. Gave it to Potts. Sneaky suspicion of offside for Thomas. But I didn't see any of that. We are 1-0 to the good. Nice little celebration as well. Nice little roll. And a chicken dance? Maybe. Right, they've got their own free kick. Daswell to Heffernan. Oh, that's so easy. Long ball to Muggishar. And Muggishar has punished us 10 minutes later. Just 10 minutes. And look how easy this was. Let's have the replay. Daswell laid it off. He pulls off his marker. That's Hadfield meant to be marking him. Wandering off. We're going to have to send stewards out looking for Hadfield at half-time and Cooksey just in case they wander into the men's bogs while they're meant to be man-marking their strikers. Booted up to Ollie Ryan. What can he do? He lays off to Brandon Potts. Probably our most impressive player of the season so far. Thomas keeps it well though. Ryan. Oh, and he scored again. What on earth is their keeper doing? He, I noticed he got a hand to the first one as well. I didn't say anything at the time. I thought I'd let him off. But that... That's criminal, he got another hand to it, should have put it behind for a corner. But uh, now he's put it into the bottom corner, and old Jimmy Price, well, <laughs> all we know about him is that he cannot handle the ball for shit. He's actually in there under 23, so probably not their first choice keeper. He's also not made an appearance all, all season, and he's 17 years old. So, yeah, definitely not their first keeper, but I will take that all day long, that's brilliant. So, 2-1 to the good at half-time. Good, 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 good. Don't let your performance levels drop. Hadfield looks stressed, as well he might. He's, he's the dark, he's the damp spot on that, uh, <laughs> on that first half. Not even the dark spot, the damp spot. Jamie Hadfield. Woeful marking for their goal. Ooh, Towie's been booked. Here we come again though, Hendry to Jamie Cheatham. Running at his marker on the right hand side. Decides to give up and go for goal, because <laughs> sometimes you just can't be asked. I get that. Fair enough. He's not been great actually, he's been one of the underperforming parties in this, in this game. I'm going to bring him off, I'm going to bring on Alex East, who's actually natural on the right wing. Look at that, love to see that full green bar. Alex East coming on for Jamie Cheatham, who's only a year older than him, I think. Here we go, a Sampeo throw in to Alex East. What can he make? He crosses it in. So as far as Henry, what can he make? Brandon Potts! Brandon Potts makes it three. Easy. I'm going to show you a win. I'm going to show you <laughs> me playing a match, which ends up with me getting three points. Isn't that exciting? I'm excited. Not been able to do that in a while. I think episode two was the last time I won on camera. So that's Brandon Potts picks up a late yellow, but we can deal with that. He's had a good game today, Brandon. I think he's going to get man of the match. He's got a goal and an assist to his name. Oh, Towie wins the ball. Playing out of position in defensive midfield, but he's doing well. As I was saying that, he lost the ball. But that's the game. 3-1 win over lowly Romulus. So... Pat on the back all round. We can still get into the playoffs. We are one point behind 4th and 5th. Our goal difference is going to make us the underdog, you might say, to get into these places. But there are three teams above us. If we get a, be if we get a win and two of them don't, we're in the playoffs. Oh, that is doable. Stanford, Witten and Basford. And I tell you what, we're playing Basford. I can taste it. It's very close. Well. 
Look at this. Potts gets the Man of the Match award as suspected. I am going to praise him because he had a great game. Superb with the number and quality of chances created. He appreciates it. He'll continue to work hard and impress me. I tell you what, I think he's, I think he's my favourite player. Look at these stats. Look at these attributes. And he's my favourite player. Go on, Brandon. Once more onto the breach then. We've got Basford away. They're sat one place above us in sixth. We can overtake them and at least one of these other teams. We can do that. We can get into the playoffs, which would mean there is another video before the end of the season. That would be ideal. We're going to stick with the same lineup. I've heard on the grapevine that not only do they play this 4 4 2, they are most susceptible to a 4 1 2 3. So that's worked out very nicely in our favour. We will play the same 4 1 2 3, the same standard flexible deep defensive line. Jamie Hadfield, just get through this 90 minutes, mate, and then we can then we can both just get on with our lives. You can go somewhere else, just wander into a field, whatever you want to do. You're not going to be my problem next season, I can I can guarantee you that. It is making me really nervous that they've got two strikers against our two centre-backs. That has not worked well for us for the majority of this season. Apart from at the start of the season where we had the dream team centre-back partnership of Jack Broadhead and Billy the Kid, who both had a decent amount of pace and a decent amount of ability. We have neither of them today. We've got Cooksey and Hadfield who are the banes of my existence, they'll probably both be gone this summer, to be honest. It looks like the first highlight's going to be ours. Towie gets it to Hendry, who plays it inside to Brandon Potts. Go on, Brandon. Thomas. Thomas has done it again. He's put us 1-0 up, with just over 10 minutes gone. Good lad, Gary Thomas. Three goals all season, and then the final two games where he needed him most, he scored two goals. And as it stands... We just, just sneak into a playoff place above Stamford, Basford and Chasetown, who are surprisingly close behind us. Excellent goal, Gary Thomas. Again, Brandon Potts getting, getting the assist. I would not be surprised if he's voted player of the season. That's an awful ball, though, from Hendry. Bourne's coming back on us. Bourne has a go. It's over the bar. Don't worry about it. I wasn't. Here they come again. Berry plays it back to Miles, who chips it up to Hutchinson. Nods it on for Story. No one's marking him. Story is deflected and in. Oh. He scored his first ever Basford United got. Well, what a time to do it. What an excellent time to do it. Was this Hadfield again? Hutchinson nodded it on over Cooksey to Story, who had lost Hadfield. It deflected off Cooksey and in. These two have given you a great example of why, at the start of next season, they'll be sat on their sofas at home watching Sky Sports instead of instead of actually playing in this team. These fans have been fantastic. I think they have been, you know. I've not, I've not mentioned this. I've not mentioned this much. But our fans have been fantastic. We're, I think we've got like the seventh highest average attendance in the league. Look at this. When we play at home, Romulus brought one away fan. One, that's so embarrassing. When we play away, 14. We bring 14 to an attendance of 57. Respectable. Bedworth brought four to an attendance of 198. Spalding brought two. We went to Loughborough, took 15 out of 134. We've been consistently, our fans have been very, very good. Showing up in... Well, showing up in numbers is maybe the wrong term, but showing up in higher numbers than the opposition show up is fair, I would say. So, these fans have been fantastic for... Bollocks, I'm going passionate. These fans have been fantastic for us all season. Go out there, give them one last performance. Passionate, do better, go. Have the latest scores open as well as the league table so we can see how Witten and Stamford are doing. Witten are winning, Stamford are losing to Romulus. That'll be a sellout, that game, won't it? Bloody hell. Northwich have snuck above us. Where did Northwich come from? Northwich are beating Stocksbridge and they've gone above us now. 
we've got to win this. We can't let Basford sneak into a playoff place ahead of us. Sheridan's shot is blocked by Smalley. Oh, breathe. We've got 19 minutes to go. And you get that sinking feeling that it's just going to fizzle out into a one-all draw. Ordinarily, this season, I'd be fine with that because results have been just all over the place. We've been losing by three or four goals like there's no tomorrow. So, ordinarily, a one-all draw would be fine. But as it stands, we need the win. We need to go above Basford to get into the playoff spots. I'm bringing on... I was going to say Dominic Delfrolli, Ryan, but I'm not. I'm going to I'm going to switch it up. I'm going to bring off Towie, who's on a booking. And we're going to go one last time to the 4-2-2-2. And bring on Dominic Dell and Alex East. So Alex East is going to win the ball for us high up. And Dominic Dell is going to smash it into the net. I have no doubt. Let's have Potts. In fact, no, let's keep Potts as he is because he's been doing well in the last couple of matches. Let's have Hendry just drop him back a bit so that uh, th I think this combined three here <laughs> as, of, as our central defensive unit, they've got a combined pace of about 12. So this should go excellently. I have no worries at all. When it lets me as well, I am going to move us on to attacking. Oh, tell me tell me we don't need to make those changes. Potts plays it down the left for Thomas. Thomas! Thomas has done it again! It's 2-1! <laughs> and the changes have been made. I didn't cancel them in time. But, aha, aha, but, let's frantically backpedal. Let's move east onto his favoured right wing. Let's get Cheatham off for the other defensive minded fielder apart from Michael Towie which I've just remembered we don't have hmm okay hmm <laughs> okay not a problem Leroy! Jennings Come <laughs> comes on as an attacking midfielder I don't know what I'm doing why am I putting on an attacking midfield it's done Go out there, Lee Hendry drops back, just to just to solidify that idea of our slow as fuck central defensive unit. Beautiful ball from Brandon Potts. Was it Potts? It was. Released Gary Thomas. And he got his third goal in two games. I think that's his sixth now of the season. What a brilliant time to show up. Here's one to keep around because he shows up for the big occasions. At 17 as well. Good lad. Potts clears from that corner. Story just sort of meanders over to get it. Because, you know, no urgency. And Baldrick plucks that out of the air. Excellent job, Baldrick. We go defensive. We go highly structured. And hopefully we go away from here with a playoff spot. As it stands, we do. But the highlight hasn't stopped yet. So no one's worried. It's off the bar. No one's worried. Sheriff's put it in. Wait. Disallowed goal. Why are you still saying 2-2? Two, two? I'm pointing with my finger. And you can't see that. Why is this still saying 2-2? Two, two, if it's been a disallowed goal. This says offside. This says not. This says offside. <laughs> this says not. I have no idea whether to cancel this defensive change. I'm going to assume it's offside. It's got to be. It's got to be offside. Change. Change back to 2-1. Yes! We are still winning. Right. Alex East, how is your defending? About as good as our two centre-backs. Excellent. Excellent. We're going to stick you there. And we're just going to pack this midfield full of players. Try and stop them from finding any joy in the centre. Alex East, our promising right winger slash centre-forward is playing the ball winning role because why not at this point all hands on deck everyone defending please hang on to this and everyone else just stay as you are that's absolutely perfect for us come on don't slow down now don't show a highlight just get it over with Hendry cross it in it's Leroy he's put it wide okay that's fine though that's fine I'm fine with that as long as that's the last highlight 30 seconds 3 seconds 3 2 1 Happy New Year, sort of. Happy playoffs. Oh, 
the team deserve to be congratulated. I absolutely agree. Fucking hell. They've showed up when it counts. We're in the playoffs. I did not see this coming. <laughs> I absolutely did not see this coming. We're, we're in the playoffs. So there's going to be another video before the end of the season. Look at that. What an effort from Thomas. What an effort from Potts. Beautiful partnership. I'm keeping both of those in the team. I think otherwise in the summer there's going to be a complete shake-up. Because we have a look at some of these stats. Goal scored, we've been 8th highest, which isn't really good enough if we want to stay in this top bracket of teams. Especially if we actually, by some miracle, get promoted against all these teams who will probably kick the shit out of us. Uh, we'll especially need an improvement up front. Goals conceded, we're 16th best. So, it's a miracle... That we're actually in this place to begin with. Look at this goal difference. <laughs> the next team down with as bad a goal difference as, uh, as us is Belper in 15th with minus 15. That is mental. How have we got here with minus 7? We've been scraping wins, but we've also just been getting obliterated every other week. Oh, yellow cards, we are the third highest, red cards, we're the fourth highest. Yeah, there we go. Average attendance, we are the 7th highest, so I'm quite happy with that. But otherwise, not happy with any of these overall stats. Wait, what is this? Wait. <laughs> what is this? Right, 24 teams left to draw for the regional play. Oh, we're in the regional divisions. So we don't just have a playoff with, who is it, Rugby, Loughborough and whoever else it was we have a playoff and we could face any of all these teams oh i i just did not expect this little bit of honesty i'm quite confident you'll all be in the same boat i've no idea who to root for i've no idea who i want to play because these are all just unknown teams to me I know we've been hammered off Loughborough this season. I know we've been hammered off Rugby this season. For the life of me, I can't remember... Witten, that's the other one. Witten, I think, have hammered us as well. <laughs> so good, it's looking promising. All these teams are probably of about similar standard. So, Chalfont, St. Peter. Okay, I thought Thurrock were going to be drawn at home there. Is it... Is there even home and away, or is it... Or is it neutral? I've no idea. I've no idea. This is going to be very interesting. Cray against Walton Casuals. That's a name. That's a name for a club. Walton Casuals. Where? I'll tell you where. Loughborough. That's where you're going. Maybe. Unless it's at a neutral venue. Oh, who knows. Aylesbury. Chessant. We're down to the last four teams. We're one of them. Royston will play Sheffield. Possibly away, possibly not. And two singer Mitchell against Tadcaster. Okay. Give me some info, please. Sheffield will play Royston Town in the English Regional First Division's promotion playoff semi final. My god, shorten that. Can we not shorten this to the Earth? Probably not. The game will be played at York Street. York Street. It's the ground of Boston United, who are in the Vanarama National League North. Okay, interesting choice. Okay, let's have a little look at Royston. Ah, that's right, we don't know anything about <laughs> their best players. But they have got a very good goalkeeper, so 1-0 to Royston. He's conceded 38 in 45. He's kept 18 clean sheets. I'm going to give him a cheeky scout, because why not? So Royston finished second behind Farnborough. Oh wow, quite a way behind Farnborough. They finished on 79 points, which is 12 more than us. I, I just don't know what to make of this. Okay, fun little, fun little fact. Brandon Zabaka <laughs> already wants to discuss the lack of first team football. To be fair, he's got a very good point. He's played once off the bench in this incredible 4-3 win over Northwich. Came off the bench 
to have some part in us winning the game. Got 6.9, not bad at all, but we've just not needed him. I brought him in thinking he could spark some life into people, but our strikers have come into form just at the same time. It's an emotional day, a lot of memories with Brandon Zabaka. Like that one time he came on in that 4-3 win, that's it, really. That, that's, been his, that's been his contribution. It didn't work out, good luck to him. This is a slightly confusing bit of news. Michael Tau has announced that he will retire from professional football at the end of the season. He's decided that he will continue to play semi-professional football. That That is magnanimous of him, considering he is playing semi-professional football. And he's, you know, he's not one of our better players. He's, he's the only one who can sort of do a job as a ball winner and as a defensive midfielder. But it's like when English footballers who've been overlooked by the national team for about 10 years come out and say that they've retired from international football. As if to say, oh, <laughs> you should have made the most of me while I was, while I was eligible. But now I'm taking that away from you. No, no one really cares. As far as I know, no professional clubs want you, Michael. I could be wrong, but that's, but that's the vibe I'm getting from this lack of interested parties showing on your profile. I don't know. This one's more absolutely devastating than confusing. Lee Hendry has announced he will retire at the end of the season from professional football. No. No, just from football. Lee Hendry... He is going to stick around, it looks like, as a staff member of some kind. He wants to manage, which is... <laughs> Looking at these attributes, it's not the direction I would choose for him. <laughs> I think he's got absolutely no chance of being a manager. But he'll make a bloody good coach, and I'll keep him on if I can. But before that, before we jump to any kind of conclusion like that... Absolutely, I want to try and convince Lee Hendry to stay on for at least another season. He signed a contract with me for another year. Fair enough, it's a non-contract, which by definition is not a contract, but he's still but he's still sort of committed himself. So yeah, hopefully Lee Hendry will stay on. He's not set the world alight this this year, but I do like having him around. I do like having a a superstar <laughs> An international superstar name on the ranks. It's quite nice. Aside from me and Ronnie Walwork, obviously. Brandon Potts is wanted by Hales Owen. Which I'm going to do everything in my power to stop. Is that good enough? Oh god, he's already gone orange. <laughs> he's gone all orange and won't talk to me anymore. Promotion wage rise. Go for it. Yearly wage rise. Go for it. Brandon. Brandon. I'm going to have no centre mids left, but I'm not a fan of these dark green patches over all my starting central midfielders. That's going to have me a bit on edge for this game against Royston. But just as the dark clouds are gathering and you think you'll never see the sun again, a silver lining <laughs> comes in the form of Biggle Swade trying to tempt Lee Cooksey away from Sheffield. I will pay you a salary, Lee. To go the fuck to Biggleswade. I've no idea where it is either. Down south. Look at this. Gary Thomas has hit form at just the right time. 7.36 average rating in the last five matches. Four goals, one assist in that time as well. He's only got six goals and six assists all season. And his stats are improving. I think he's going to drag us up. I think Gary Thomas... He's already showed he can be the difference in these matches. I reckon he can drag us up, kicking and screaming, by the skin of our teeth. And that's where I'm going to leave it for this video. Royston against Sheffield at York Street will be the semi-final of the playoffs. It is not a two-legged semi-final, it's a one-legged semi-final. Hopefully next video I'll be able to show you the semi-final and the final, which we will then win to get promoted. If not, it'll just be a short video. But I will... I will have a look around the league, see what's see what's happening, see if any shock league wins have happened elsewhere. It's improbable, considering we had a look around the leagues last episode and there were no real shocks at that point, but who knows. So, so thanks very much for watching the video. Leave a like and subscribe if you enjoyed the video. 
and I will see you next time for the playoff final. Also, make sure to go and watch Freddy Adu, who's taken over Arsenal, also on the Wasted Talent channel. And if you could leave me a comment as well, I'd love to hear some constructive feedback on what I can do differently in these videos, how I can improve on them. That would be fantastic. But other than that, I'll see you next time. Bye.